Welcome to Current Mood. I'm your ex-boyfriend, John Mayer. Another week has gone by. Hello, everybody. Come on in. Come chill. As you can see, it's starting to be summertime now. Nothing I can do about that. There's always something each week that throws me off. This time it was the sun. I'm late because I was trying to tape things that should never be taped to windows to windows. And there's still a very good chance that it might fall blowing out this whole thing. But that's the excitement of a live show and no curtains. That's the excitement of living in a place with no curtains. It's an exciting job. Uh, this was the week that I think we all lost the tack when it came to eating. I don't know about you, but I'm now just eating at random times of the day. Take, take the saddest holiday you ever had and multiply it by three. And that's where I am. And I have to assume that's where you are. I've talked to some other people and they've said they're at that same place as well. So we're gonna to talk tonight, a little bit later in the show, to my dear friend and expert trainer, Harley Pasternak, who is going to give us some advice on how we can figure out a way through in terms of health and fitness. Grape Juice Boys, present. Uh, a little about summers, what the whole year's all about. Boy, it's getting tough to stay indoors. Is today Blur's Day? Yeah, it would be Blur's Day if it weren't for, well, if it weren't for me doing current mood, that's why I like doing current mood. But man, is it getting tough to stay inside. I'm not sure, I'm not sure that I'll be able to blame anybody for going outside soon. Um, it certainly does complicate things when it's bright and warm and beautiful out. Manila Philippines, sending love right back here. Too much pasta, not enough sauce. Bought Peloton today, congratulations. Um, well, you probably bought a Peloton because, not because you were like, oh, you know, I think I'll get a Peloton. You probably screamed it either out loud or in your head. You said, that's it. I've got to do something. Well, there's some hope on the horizon we're gonna talk to Harley Pasternak. Uh, but first, um, there's a programming note I'd like to let you know about. Um, this Tuesday, uh, Current Mood Town Hall, my guests will be Dr. Phil, Spider-Man, Tars, and musical guest Fauci. So don't miss that, it's a Current Mood Town Hall Tuesday night. Okay, we did that. Tune in, you don't wanna miss it. Uh, some really bummer news this week in the form of the Dead & Company tour being canceled. And I'm not sure there's a better, more appropriate word than bummer. Um, I think it keeps it in perspective with the rest of what's going on in the world, but it is a distinctly deep bummer. I've been on tours before and I've had tours come and go and I've had shows get canceled and things, and that's sort of the way things are. But this one's a tough one because this tour means everything to me because it's not my, you know, it's not my thing. It, this is where I get so much from being a part of a larger thing. And it kind of went by pretty quickly. It was a post, it had some, you know, some information given, which was very important to give. And then the last couple of days, I've thought to myself, what, well, I just never get to talk about this again. And I thought, let me tell people on Current Mood how I feel about it. Um, deadheads, who, whom I consider myself one of, I'm a, I'm a deadhead with one foot in, on the stage, uh, we're always connected. And, and, and maybe, maybe I could say that I'm connected by way of these shows that we do. And we've been so connected to the point where when there's a, a two night stand somewhere, a double header, and we go home for the night, I feel like I'm still with everybody and we're just, we're camping out together. And when there's a, a, a couple of weeks in between uh, the legs of a tour, I feel, I feel everyone else sleeping. I feel everyone else in pajamas. And so I thought to myself, maybe this summer we can still use that sort of grateful dead telepathy and still find a way to keep connected and listen to the music in our own space and time, which, 
which really coming together in a concert setting is just still being connected in that distant way, but doing it all together and linking back up and charging up on that. I think we can still stay connected and listen to the music. And I I'm looking forward to being a listener. I'm looking forward to being just a listener and getting the same thing out of it that everyone else gets out of it. We will be by pools. Not sure how many people will be around the pools, but I will be thinking about you listening to that music and, um, We'll get, we'll get through that and we will be on stage again next year. That was my happy place though, I'll tell you what. Even though we didn't cancel the tour until last week, and I know that it probably looked like it was a foregone conclusion that we would cancel the tour, that sure meant a lot to me that we hadn't canceled it yet. That always felt good to me because I think all of us have a happy place that we go to that symbolizes this being behind us or this at least being a tenable situation. And for me, it's being on stage with Dead & Company. That's what it is for me. And I saw the crowd and I heard the, the crowd in the summer and, and it, that was a tough one to give up. But I just wanted to spend a second to say that we're still gonna listen to the music play and um, I will be totally linked up through that. So uh, with that, we're gonna take a commercial break and uh, we will be right back. He has another missile, Michael. Let's go get him! The television's action package. The man. Do it! Now! The machine. I am the voice of Night Industry 2000. Together, they're an unbeatable combination. Easy for you to say. Team up for a high-flying adventure. Kid, hurry! David Hasselhoff stars. We'll never survive a direct hit. We got no choice, kid. On Night Rider. Weeknights at 6 on TV 39. Okay, and we're back. Yeah, it looks like I'm on the set of a Hollywood movie with a big light. Uh, but that's just the, it'll, it'll, that's just a lousy sunset. Just, it'll be gone. It'll be gone soon. Just hang in there. It's a lousy, disgusting sunset. Um, again, I don't know if you guys are just tuning in. There's a town hall on Tuesday. Um, it's going to be featuring Dr. Phil, Spider-Man, Tars, and music from Fauci. That's next Tuesday. That's a current mood town hall. A bit of a programming note there for you. Um, so yeah, this was the week that I really kind of lost my way with being in shape. Um, uh, and I don't need to be buff, but I need to feel personally as if I'm making an effort to stay in the place I like to stay in. So I called my friend Harley Pasternak and I said, Harley, can, can you come on and can we discuss a little bit about what might be able to happen? I'm gonna see if I can find him here. Oh boy. It's always a thing. It's always a thing with bringing someone in. Huh? Huh? Yeah, I don't know. We're gonna try to get him. We're gonna try to get him. Well, we may have to go to a commercial break while we figure this out. Let's take a look here and see if that... I'm pressing, I'm pressing the button. Hmm. I flipped it. That's what... What? I didn't even press the flip it button. Hmm. All right, well, we may have to take another commercial break uh, while we figure this out. Um, we'll see you right after this. How would you like to drive a car that talks, has a mind of its own, and goes faster than any car? I am the voice of Knight Industry 2000's microprocessor. This prime crasher is driven by Michael Knight, and it may be more than he bargained for. I don't believe this. So buckle up for action with the fastest show on television, Knight Rider. Okay, we're back. Uh, let's see if anything changed here. I don't know. I don't think I can do it tonight. I'm, I'm trying to get it to work. You know, it's an evolving technology. I am hitting the button for the faces of the people. Again, it flipped it and I didn't even hit the flip it button. We may have to do this next week. I don't, I don't know exactly what to do about that. Um, let me see. Perhaps it has to do with I don't want to jump off and back on. I, I don't want to jump off and back on.
All right, listen. There's Harley. Uh. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Harley Pastor. <laughs> we'll edit that part out. Harley, how are you? I'm here. I'm sorry about that. I was pressing the buttons. It didn't work. We figured it out. So thank you. So I called you a couple days ago. I said, will you help me and probably we, probably us, on current mood? Because I think everyone I talk to is saying the same thing, that they've sort of seen their discipline or the momentum of staying in shape just completely disappear. I know I have this week. I'll tell you my weakness is the peanut butter and jelly sandwich, as my friend says, a quarantine peanut butter and jelly sandwich just hits different. So I look at it like this. All of the cues that we've existed around uh, that help keep us in shape and help us eat right, like uh, when it's the holidays, we know that the holidays have an end. We know that after the end of the holidays comes New Year's Eve and that comes with uh, resolutions and we get back on the treadmill in January. But this seems to me to be sort of an endless holiday. We also don't have people that we can meet up with uh, we don't have a reason to look any look our best because we know we're indoors all day. We don't have that sort of healthy vanity. And then also, because we don't have normal working hours, we don't have these normal eating cues in between the hours that we work. Have you had, do you have any idea how we can find some sort of structure inside of a structureless life right now? I think it's more important than ever that we have routines because a lot of us are out of our normal routines. A lot of people don't work. A lot of people are furloughed. Um, and a lot of people are working from home. So we're waking up at weird times that we don't normally. We're going to bed at weird times we don't normally do. We're not having dinner when we normally have dinner. We skipped a meal. We might add an extra snack. So I think more That's than right. ever- I skipped dinner last to, night. Yeah. So we, to, to normalize ourselves, I think having a routine is helpful. There should be flexibility in that routine. But I, I think it'll keep us saner and healthier through the process. What, so for me, if I'm itemizing the stuff that makes me feel bad when I eat it, like my comfort eating, it's, I don't even want to say the name of the cereal because I don't want them to send me any. But, so don't I know, send me I any know the name. I am addicted to s'mores cereal. I'm absolutely <laughs> addicted to s'mores cereal. One box every day and a half. There's three servings in there for me. And I've gotten to the point with my kind of nervous time filling eating where I don't even taste the food. I don't even enjoy it. It's not a treat anymore. Rants that I go into. And the other thing is the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Is there anything that I could be doing, for instance, with a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Could I still feel like I was having a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but not have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Number one, let's just get this out of the way. Confirm, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich not good for you? <laughs> I think, it, I think it depends for who and how often and what kind. I how about think, me um, twice a day? <laughs> I think there's, you know, there's a continuum. So could you do an open face PB&J sandwich? Would that be better? Absolutely. Could it be, uh, make sure it's natural peanut butter? Then that would be even better. So I think there's a continuum. One of my favorite things to do is we use this 45 calorie whole wheat toast. We bread, we mm -hmm. make toast out of it. And then I put on peanut butter and then I put on as many berries as I can jam on top. Oh, just no real berries. berries? Yeah, uh, raspberries hat. or blackberries, and it's beautiful. Great. I'll send you a picture. Yeah, but send, and put this stuff up on your uh, Instagram as well, on your stories. Everybody follow, you can see the name, at Harley Pasternak. Maybe it would be cool to itemize anything we're talking about here. What about working out? I, I'm base, I base my working out on momentum. One leads to another workout, leads to another workout, leads to another workout, and there's sort of a goal post. But there's no chronological goalpost here. How do I, how do we create a goal in a timeless void? I think you just described the perfect way that everyone should approach physical activity, not just now, but always. You start with one small thing I, and everyone sets themselves up for failure. You know, one day they wake up and they say, okay, I'm not working for the next two months. I'm going to run a marathon by the end of this. Like, no, dude, you're going to hurt yourself. Right. Or, I'm right. gonna I'm, I'm gonna do 20k a day. Start off by walking around the block. Right. The next day, maybe walk around to the block twice. Right. Right. The next day, and add on that and build on to that until the point that you're hopefully doing. I use a Fitbit, so you know, 12,000 steps a day. But that should not be your goal at the beginning. I think you'd set it perfectly. Start off with one small, symbolic gesture to physical activity, and then build on it. 
Yeah, it's tough for me. I'm gonna really try to build on it. It's I'm 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 having to look for a new motivation to go work out, right? Because normally it's and it's I call it healthy vanity, right? It's not narcissism, but it's using the fact that people will see you as a motivator to look your best. I almost feel like right now we could all secretly gain 10 pounds and secretly lose 10 pounds before this is all over. And, <laughs> and so I'm sort of getting to the end of my, of my feeling like, look kid, eat whatever you want. Cause now I'm going like, this doesn't even feel right. <laughs> so, so for tomorrow, so tomorrow's Monday, it's a great start day. What can people who have been kind of doing this, wear whatever you want to school yeah. kind of, kind of thing, who are now going, this doesn't serve me anymore because it doesn't serve me anymore. What can people do starting tomorrow as day one of something? Than when they day wake one, up? we're gonna focus on just having a, a healthy breakfast. Let's not worry about healthy lunches and healthy dinners and healthy snacks. Day one, walk around the block once, early in the day that you, you live. And at the end of the day, walk around that block once. And in between, just have a great breakfast. Let's not worry about having a perfectly crafted, healthy right. set of meals and snacks throughout the day. But the gesture of breakfast and, and walking around the block. And, and put a little silver lining on this for me, if you can. Since I have added some more weight to my midsection, can that turn into muscle faster than not having had weight on there in the first place? No. No? <laughs> There's nothing like it's already there? And no. It can be easily, you know. So I'm going to have to, wait a minute. So you're telling me I'm going to have to lose that fat and then build more muscle. Um, but it can be concurrent, right? They can happen at the same time. So as you're physically active, you can melt away the fat and you can develop lean muscle tissue at the same time. All right. It's a tough one, Harley, because I've known you for over a decade, 15 years. I've and known you for 15 years. 15 years. And there's always been this set sort of course of action around us. And I'm looking around going like, this is kind of a dietary free for all, which feels good for the first couple of weeks. And now it's feeling bad. I think people out there are feeling a little bit kind of masochistic now and i'm going i uh. so tomorrow i'm gonna wake up i'm gonna do the right breakfast and i'm gonna do 30 minutes on a treadmill and i will I'm not... post i will post photos of four great breakfast options great I will for all of your people you. thank you and and the last thing i want to ask you sorry what and the the other thing I, is, is i read something that was interesting they're talking about the covid 19 literally the COVID-19, the 19 pounds that people are going to gain oh, during quarantine and the health implications associated with that outweigh the virus itself exponentially. So if you look at, there's a hundred million pre-diabetics in the U S 35 million diabetics. And if those right. people are less active, we know they're 35% less active. That's what I was thinking. It's this that much of a perfect storm. Year. It's a perfect storm of cluster F. Yeah. It's yep. the perfect storm. So the anxiety lowers your immune system. The yep. anxiety makes you want to eat more. The eating more leads to more sugar. The more sugar yep. leads to being diabetic. More diabetic yep. leads to a pre-existing condition. Yep. That's what makes this so sinister. Yep. That's what makes it so sinister. So now the, the, my last question is, are there things you can recommend that you can put on your page that take the place of the things we snack on that still kind of sate us a little bit. We can stand in the pantry and eat, but it's not doing tons of damage, but we can still go like this and watch CNN and just keep going like that. My kids love jicama, little jicama slices. Yeah. It's sweet and crunchy and, um, and they'll, they'll balance. What are your favorite snacks, honey? Jicama and what else? Apple, apple with peanut butter. And what else? Yogurt. 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 And do you Have put you it ever in had a chicken yogurt? nugget? Ever had a chicken nugget? You're at a chicken nugget? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Harley, you're awesome. You are awesome. We're going to all hang in there. You probably have it. Have you gained any weight? Do you have an extra pound on you anywhere? I have not. I'm almost scared to say it. I'm probably the leanest I've been in several years just because I'm busier than I normally am not making money, right. just doing things, staying as busy as I can every minute of the day. So Good by mistake. Well, I'm going to try, but I just stand around and eat recreationally and that's got to end tomorrow. It's going to end tomorrow. But you look so, lean. Your face looks lean. Well, the older I get, I find the more you get away with the face 
this is this is why people put on weight when they get older because the face when you're younger the face reads all of the weight and then as you get older the face doesn't wear it as much but right. oh, here's what happens i look in the mirror and i go hey i still got it and then i turn to the side and i realize i look like a freight train with a photograph of a flat stomach taped to the front of it <laughs> oh, I, uh, looking head on will always be the lie then you got to go like this and you go oh i'm getting deeper i'm getting <laughs> deeper so that's what's as happening you once to said, me. as you once said very well gravity oh wants to bring me down oh. harley you are awesome oh. you're the best everybody check love out you, brother. harley pastor next uh, i love you too i will see you soon all right take care yeah. Bye. Was that FaceTime? Um, that was Harley Pasternak. How awesome is he? Uh, I just want to let you guys know, again, programming note, Town Hall, Tuesday. Dr. Phil, Spider-Man, TARS, musical guest, Fauci. That's the Town Hall on Tuesday. Um, how's everyone doing out there? Health advice, act like there's still a summer tour. I don't know. Summer tour for me was always kind of a free-for-all. 1989 was a great year of the dead. Yes, it certainly was. Happy birthday, Briley. Gravity, can you say, yeah. Wants to bring me down. Okay, this is a good question. What happened to John Grayer? I have done nothing to my hair color-wise. I feel as if it moves in and out of being grayer. Maybe it's longer and the lighting's different. Snacks will be the end. My snack drive is insane right now. I'm telling you, you're screwed from every angle because it's the only thing we have is to just get this little boost of serotonin from eating. And then now I'm getting a shame dip. A little shame, a little shame dip afterwards. Um, let's, uh, let's go to a commercial and we'll be right back. And right, we're back. Um, oh, I wrote a song about, I wrote a song about this. This is a song about eating too much during the pandemic. No, it won't be that fun When it's so hard to run Calories I'm a boy than I used to be. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. <sighs> Thank, you. Thank you. Hey, you know, I sure like to be friends with that Chris Cuomo. Just saying. Don't you feel anybody out there just look at Chris Cuomo and go like, I want to send that guy a real live friend request. You're lucky if you're friends with Chris Cuomo. I got to tell you, you got you to be, you be a great friend. Last time I looked at someone I didn't know and said I want to be their friend, it was Dwayne Wade. I just looked at Dwayne Wade and I got, I want to be that guy's friend. Um, hair looks great. Thank you. Thank you, Nomi. Greetings from Brazil. Hello, Brazil. Um, what else do we got here? Well, look, this might be a shorter episode or we sit around and talk and see where we can get to. Uh, you should try F45 Fitness. Okay, this has, that sentence has two things that uh, are not my favorite. Number one is telling me I should try something and fitness. It combines the two things I don't like. is a suggestion and fitness. Uh, denim fit, thank you. Men's health mag, thank you very much. I'm, I'm going top and bottom denim and I don't have a problem with it. I'm worried about this upcoming week with the anniversary, overindulgence is a risk. Yeah, what's the plan for you now that the tour is canceled? Uh, be retired for a minute. Um, when I'm not, when I'm not doing current mood, I am not in any way a high profile person. I've sort of left it. <laughs> F45 will restart your computer. I've sort of left. Uh, I was saying like, you can't be famous if you don't have a public. There's no public. So how can I be a famous person when there's literally no public? I'm just a dude eating standing up eating in the kitchen and looking for my purpose in life this way. And I'm finding it through hobbies, other pursuits. Can I please release a jazz album? Some, 
someday. Um, this is your problem. Well, I don't even think of this as like being a famous guy. I think of this like me and my friends just sitting, sitting, hanging out for a minute. Uh, raw veggies, peanut butter, moderate exercise, chill, walk the dog. You're missing one thing, which is some kind of fatty substance that puts the stomach to sleep. You know, I can't sleep if the stomach's not asleep. I say, I say, feed the stomach and the body will sleep. And peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I mean, I'm getting a whole peanut butter and jelly sandwich down in four bites. I'm getting it in four bites. I'm not even thinking about it when I eat it. I didn't think I needed it while I ate it. And I don't think I feel better when I do. <laughs> I just did it. And I'll do it again tonight. Can you quarantine me? Of course you can. Have I tried painting on canvas? Yes. But I was painting on canvas well before I understood the power of gesso. Right? It's called gesso. I didn't know anything about it. What kind of bread? Wheat bread? Wheat bread? You know, when you're making a sandwich and you take the two pieces of bread and you place them next to each other on the kitchen counter, you have to remember whether you went like this or whether you went like this. Because if you do this, then you won't get a perfect perimeter of the sandwich to line up. And if that happens, well, you're going to hell. OCD rules, you're going to hell. And that's my problem with eating. And then I always do the third. Okay, so one peanut butter and jelly sandwich oftentimes is not enough for me and I need one more half a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So I take one piece of bread, on one half of the piece of bread, I put the peanut butter and the jelly, I fold it like a taco and I eat it two bites. And then I fall asleep. And as I fall asleep, my metabolism is just completely overrun by I'm more buoyant than I used to be. Hey, we're going to take a commercial break. We will be right back. So again, there's a town hall. I don't know if I don't know if I told you enough that I'm having a town hall. There's a town hall. My guests will be Dr. Phil, Spider Man, Tars, the music from Fauci. Uh, I didn't know Fauci was had, he goes by Fauci when he plays music. And time permitting, he's going to play. We actually have a uh, promo picture from Fauci's uh, Fauci, Fauci store. There he is. <laughs> it's right there. That's fantastic. Yes. So that's going to be an exciting show. It's going to be a very exciting show. Uh, Ariel Posen, thank you. What's up, Margo? Um, what kind of watch am I wearing? G-Shock, baby. I'm telling you. I'm a G-Shock boy now. Um, oh, thank you. Cooking and listening to music. Thank you. You said Fauci the game is strong. Is there something called Fauci the game? And can that be bought at a toy store and played at home with the family? Because I'm in. You rolled a seven. Oh, no. TARS was actually canceled. Oh, well, okay. Well, I scheduled to appear. Scheduled to appear. Why am I wearing a watch in quarantine? Well, I need to know what time to take my dog out. I like to know what time to go to sleep. Um, I guess I'm really finding myself explaining to you what a watch does. <laughs> I find myself now just explaining what a watch does. It, it's, it's, it's as good in quarantine as it is at work or on the road, it's a watch and it's a simple watch, except it can tell me the barometric pressure, which is fun. Do I cut my PB and jellies and the triangles are in half? In half, but don't, listen, let me tell you something. And I know that it's facetious and it's fun, but, but uh, coming down on somebody for the way they prepare their food is a very low hanging fruit. It's a very low hanging fruit. If, if, if I said, <laughs> 
same car and he says, why are you wearing a shirt during quarantine? You're so right. Why am I wearing a shirt? I go down the middle. Now, if you wanted me to so that it made you feel better, I have no problem going diagonal. Someone took me to task one time. They said, you put the peanut butter and the jelly on the same slice of bread? And I said, why, yes, I do. And I cap it off. And then I can't believe you do that. I go, well, I'll do it different for you next time. That ends an argument really quickly. When you go like, I'll do it different for you next time. The only one I don't like is when someone's like, I can't believe, I don't know how you could like something. I go, well, that's, you've defined how people are different. I don't know how you could like pineapple and pizza. I go, well, the prison you must live in and I live in. What are your thoughts on Tony Hawk's Pro Skater? So uh, my thought on Tony Hawk Pro Skater, you thought I wouldn't have a thought, but I have thought about everything. My thought on Tony Hawk Pro Skater is that I never actually got to the skating part. I just enjoyed making characters. And I would name them funny names and I'd make them look crazy and I'd laugh. And by then I was done with my video game fix. Uh, are you the graphic designer for the current mood promos? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. In fact, I now have to run another. So the rule is, if you have a town hall, you have to advertise it 400 times a day. So again, I've got to advertise the town hall. So it's I like the Knight Rider touch at the end. Be there. Are we rescheduling the Dead & Company tour? We are not. not. Not in the sense that we are going to do this tour any other time than next year's summer tour. Um, do I think my music will make its way on the Tony Hawk soundtrack? I don't think I ever made a single song that was good for the Tony Hawk soundtrack. Uh, can I FaceTime with We Are For Current Mood? That'd be fun. Maybe we can do it. Maybe we can do it. What am I drinking? Uh, tonight's drink, I'm addicted to this. Spin drift sparkling water. Now I should tell you, I don't get paid for any of this stuff. I really just do like drinking this stuff. If you're a sparkling water fan, this grapefruit spin drift, I'm, I'm ripping off like six of these a day and they are perfectly carbonated so that they don't make you stop swallowing because some sparkling water makes you have to stop and kind of recover from the sparkliness, but not this. This is just sparkly to the point where you can keep hitting it and not have to quit. So hit it, don't quit it. Spindrift. Yep, that's the nice drink. Uh, have I tried Zevia? No, it's sparkling water that tastes like soda. That would then be soda. Um, I believe that soda is just defined by tasting like soda. Give you special advice. Um, just, just do it. All right. Well, well you, you want Moose? Moose is, Moose is around. He's, uh, he's FaceTiming his girlfriend in Argentina. Just grab the last box at Albertson's. Yeah, let's hit it after the show. Well, listen, I might have to send you off early because uh, we're all going a little nutty. I'm going a little nutty. I wasn't in the mood to like, do the show until this morning I woke up and started writing things for the show and then I made myself laugh. I really made myself laugh. Um, let me just uh, make sure here. Uh, this is what I like to do here. We'll just flip that, keep that there so that everybody can see. There's a town hall on Tuesday featuring Dr. Phil, Spider-Man, TARS, musical guest Anthony Fauci. Don't want to miss it. We're going to keep that up there because again, whenever you have a town hall, you have to advertise the shit out of it. Um, Moose is all about chat roulette. No, he's all about, uh, yeah. oh, the other one I realized is the dirty name. I can't say it. Just imagine a dog sitting in front of a camera with text going by and bing, bing, bing. Moose is like, thank you, bing, thank you, bing, bing, thank you. Hey, Moose, you have fun on Chatterbait? How much money did you make? Oh, wow, 6,000 tokens. I've only just learned about Chatterbait. This is, I just think it was still like tokens. Tokens are such a funny thing. Like, oh, tokens. Oh, I just got naked for you. But tokens, I got tokens. It's funny. It's funny to me. Uh, how many bubbles does Cam soda? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, uh, I'm going to send you off with a song uh, that made me feel really good at the end of all this uh, about three weeks ago. And uh, it goes like this. 
me there. Okay, so I'm going to send you off when I sing the song. So let me just see if there's anyone else who wants to talk. Phineas! Uh, I think about you a lot, Phineas, because I know you were supposed to be on the road. And uh, it bums me out for you. It bums me out for you. Thank you, everyone, for sitting through and watching. Thank you, Harley Pasternak. You were awesome. Uh, sunny side up. I will come back. We will see you next Sunday. Ho hang in there. Listen, here's what I think is hard to understand, is that the scenario presented to us in early March is the same scenario. Uh, again, town hall. It would seem cognitively that the scenario has changed dramatically and does change dramatically every day because the angle of view on this changes every day by new information being shot through a cannon. And, and, and it gives us the sense that this is evolving at a faster rate than it is evolving. And I think that that's done us a disservice because we've sort of gotten to the end of our endurance because we feel as if we've been doing this for much longer because the narrative has just kept recycling so quickly and so often with so many different new ideas in it. But they aren't the fundamental ideas that are changing. And that fundamental idea is still intact. And to the best of your ability, it would be great. And I'm going to try to do this as well to stick to the original plan. But the original plan in life begins to get thin and weak and it begins to get forgotten about. I mean, flatten the curve as a concept feels 30 years old already, yet it still needs to happen. And now you have warm weather. I, I really think, and I don't wanna get in trouble for saying this, but if I were to be a reporter on the sort of overall psyche of the world, I will say, you got till Memorial Day. I mean, maybe even a little, you got till Memorial Day before you lose all the attention from people. So just hang in there. I know that the directive feels like it's completely been lost, but the basic story still holds on. And I have such a problem with it as well, because it seems like the virus itself has just changed and we've gotten to know it and now it does this and now it's smoking a cigarette going like I'll, I'll give you three months off i'll give you three months off i'll come back same scenario same situation just keep hanging in there i know that it challenges a certain lobe of your brain to hold on to the same t it's like wearing the same pants every day putting on your coronavirus pandemic pants Imagine wearing the same pants. You're like, you have to get into those same pants. But those pants are very important pants. I know. It's really hard. That sweet, sweet sunlight coming in was calling me outside my house. Hang in there to the best of your ability. And remember, through all this, you are still you. Oh, hold on a second. Everything today is so wild. You are still you, you are still fun, even when you're singing to a crowd of one, though the present situation can be scary, you're the him or her you were in January, and all your friends help to see you through so don't be blue you are still you you are still you you still got style even if you don't put pants on for a while I know it all can seem to be a shade confusing All the days and weeks and months you may be losing Running out of clever things to do But it still holds true You are still you You are still you 
will not change Even though the times we're living in are strange Even if you cry a couple times a day I would say it helps to keep the pain at bay It's certainly sad as sad can be but believe me you are still you that's my show tonight have another wonderful week don't forget current mood town hall tuesday featuring dr phil spider-man tars the music performance by fauci i'm john thank you harley pasternak everybody try to have the most healthy week you can let's look forward to something and let's chase it on a treadmill jeffrey ross we love you so you sign up we love you have a great week see you soon oh and you know it's true oh you are still you cat dennings we love you see you later bye bye town hall Tuesday, not really. <laughs>